Hello. Mic, mic on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hello and welcome to the LVM show. Uh, I'm just glad you guys are here for another week. We have a guest going to be sitting down with us in a few minutes. So I I'm glad you guys went through that whole heat wave pretty good. But was it me or the heat wave they said was supposed to be Saturday, but Sunday was hotter than Saturday? I, like everybody was scared on Saturday, but then Sunday came, it was much, much hotter. I stood home. I ran across the street of the supermarket and ran back upstairs. So uh, I'm over here going to do a Facebook uh, watch on my, um, uh, my, my uh, page here. But anyway, hey, uh, let's say uh, claps, claps, claps to Puerto Rico. They have won. But it's just the beginning. I think it's, it's just the start of where Puerto Rico can go at the moment. So it's a lot more that they need to do, but it just shows if you guys get together, not just to drink, things can happen. Hey, I'm just saying, you know, Latin people, we're Latin. We're Latin. Latin people, we get together. In other words, meaning today we drink. So, you know, maybe they did have a couple of Coronas and Budweiser's out there. That's probably why they had a whole bunch of crowds. Who knows? Maybe the Coquito Queen was out there giving out her Coquitos and stuff. But anyway, it was good. It, we uh, I can't say we because I wasn't there, but as a Latin heritage person, it's a good step. But there's still more steps to go. So um, let's, uh, let's push on a little bit more. Just because of that reason, there's still a lot more to go, and we need a lot more to do. So, especially if you guys that want to go independent, um, please make sure. I'm going Facebook Watch right now. Oh, I see me. I see me right there. Bam, I go Facebook Watch. I'm done. And I share. So now I'm on Facebook Watch, just like you guys are supposed to be doing, sharing. But anyway. Before I bring out my guests, we had a topic, and you know, I'll probably ask my guests too about the topic. You know how we do, we always bring stuff up, we'll play a couple of games, have some fun. Um, it's not always a serious, serious matter here. But, oh, and uh, listen to the LDM radio this Saturday. We're hoping that without technical issues, we'll be live on the LDM radio station. So they're gonna be doing Christmas in July with Apollonia Cruise. So check that out. We're one of the sponsors there, and we're going to be taking photos and all the other stuff. All right. So one of the questions that we had was, uh, how long is it before you stop babying your mate? Or I, it may, I say mate because it can be husband, boyfriend, a date. Uh, one night stands or swing. It can be whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't know the names they put nowadays, you know, because everybody won't be politically correct. You know, we used to call it side boo. Now you just call it a temporary person. I don't know what they call it now, but anyway, uh, they tagged me on a, on a picture. Well, we don't need to know. Oh, that's another one? That's another one? We don't need to know. That, that's another name of a person. Yeah, yeah I went to my girlfriend's lovers, and I, I, you don't need to know person. So, uh, but anyway, they, they tagged me in a picture saying that my ex got shot, I went to the hospital, took care of him until he came out the hospital, started helping him with his rehab and everything, and then once he started uh, walking again, he winded up going with someone else. I actually think, first of all, like I was saying, it's an ex. First of all, it had to be a reason why he was an ex. So you coming and helping him, I forgot the name that psychiatrists use is when that happens. It's because you felt sorry because he was shot and, and the emotions took you over and you wanted to help the, uh, the ex. But no, cut it, done. Believe me, call. I wish one of my exes called me talking about, I got shot. I'd be like, damn, then you like 50 cent because you're still calling me. You're live, right? Woo! Make a, rap, break a, make a rap song and maybe you come famous. Bye. You know, I'm hang up. 
why are you calling me? You know what, what I'm saying? I'm like, you calling me? I'm your ex. Don't call me. You know? Uh, 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 I don't know if, they, if he called because they just said that he, they called her. So maybe the hospital called her. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you are probably with the closest one, you know what I'm saying? But it's an ex for a reason, people. Uh, you know, you need to su shut it down. Hey, uh, Marky, want to say hello. Prince Cologne, hello. Sean Wilson. Javier Lewis, what's going on? So, you know, say hello to all these uh, people out there that's on the uh, page at the moment. So, like I was saying, it, it's a next. So, how long, if you're with someone, do you keep babying them like, oh, don't worry, do this, oh, don't worry. Like, Never. you lost 20 jobs already. Stuff like that. Like, how, how many jobs are you going to obtain before before you even think about moving on or how many mistakes in other words do you do you holler uh, 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 or tolerate or something I don't know but if your ex calls you with an issue what do you do and what do you say that, that that's one of the uh, hey David that uh, Jackson what's going on but um what is the issues that you say uh, if my ex called me I'm like uh, you have reached the wrong number. Please try again. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need to call me. Because I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those persons, of course, you break up with someone and now you change your number. Like, I, I had my number for, wow, years. For years. So, but don't call me. And don't baby it. Because if you baby it, especially a guy. I'm, 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 guys, if you got your girl next to you, you might as well just. Shut the, 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 the mute off. Don't, don't come off. Just shut the, you know, turn off the mute right now. I'm going to let the, the girls know. Guys, we get an ego when you girls keep calling us and, and want to wanna try and we keep pushing your way and you keep coming. Guarantee, don't call that person back for a couple uh, days or a couple weeks. What he's going to do, he's going to wind up calling you. I'm just saying, I'm giving little hints that you can... Uh, work with but uh no uh it's an ex for a reason now if you have kids together that's probably something different but again don't use what i call the uh the crutch or the or the or the cane or whatever you want to you know say as a child because the child don't have nothing to do with it so if the child is seven to eight years old, you shouldn't be calling me. You should be passing the phone on. Matter of fact, I've been seeing so many eight-year-old, nine-year-olds with their own phone, so they can call their own parent themselves. The ex don't need to call. Just do like a call your daddy and tell him you need sneakers, and let the let, let the the child call. You don't need the ex to call. Am I am I right or am I right? You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, Rizzo, Frank, hey. Little Frankie boy right there. That's my, that's my man right there. Nightline Radio to the heart. That's what, uh, you know, for you guys that don't know, LDM show started off in Nightline Radio. And uh, with that said, they helped us where we at right now. Without them, they would have not been me. And without you guys, they would have not been us. So, but again, um, X. Uh, for a reason, but if you do have a child with them, after the child starts speaking, you don't have to be calling. Let the child call. That's how it, how it goes. You know, but uh, <laughs> babying, babying them a lot. What up, yo? <laughs> Frank Rizzo. But uh, hey, Frank, if your ex would call you, what would you do? I, I, you know, since you're on the, on the thing, and Frank, believe me, when me and Frank talk, it's like crazy. We, we be having fun and joking around. But with my ex call, I tell you, you're going to be getting the wrong number. Ain't, ain't no talking. Ain't, well, especially if I'm not single. If I'm not single. But if I'm single, I don't know. Maybe it'd be a little different. Maybe it'd be a little different. If, if you know, it itches, it got to scratch. Sometimes I'm just talking <laughs> real stuff to the guy. That's what I'm saying. You know? But, uh... It happens, but if you're gonna go to your ex and help them and help them, 
and then they wind up with someone else, you just ask for it. That's all I'm going to say. You just basically ask for the uh, problems because they wouldn't ask. They didn't ask for your help. You just wanted to go and help. So you wanted to be a good Samaritan. Did it work? Maybe not. Would it, would it work again? Maybe not, but you're going to constantly continue doing it. Finding love in the wrong places is just not right. That's all I got to say, you know. But uh, as soon as my engineer comes, we can take a short break, and we're going to come back with one of our guests today. We're going to keep talking uh, a little bit more about subjects like that. But again, ladies and gentlemen, shout out to Puerto Rico for winning, uh, winning the, the battle, I can say, not the war. Uh, they still need a long way to go, and they still need a lot of uh, help. It's the same way with every other race that you are not noticing that is what things are going on because there are a lot of stuff that's going on that the United States is behind of all the misery. So we got to do something, just like Puerto Rico got to do something. So again, X for a reason. X marks the spot, not this time. Ain't no treasure when you go with your exes. Uh, now, it depends if how you broke up. I, I guess if you break up in a bad, bad way, then you shouldn't. It's toxic if you're going to wind up together anyway. So, But if you broke up like, let's say, your careers went different ways, you had to go and they didn't want to leave, certain things like that I can understand that if you wind up coming back, it will work for, for good. Uh, so, in my case, that's basically what happened. We're together, work and my career, we went totally different ways. Many moons later, we winded up together and stood together ever since. So, But in all cases, it never happens that way. So don't expect so much when you do that, when you help your your ex out. So, but anyway, uh, it is summertime. Check us out. We'll be at uh, Joe. Joey Joe is in the house. So, Joey, go. Hey, uh, like I said, I'm just here shooting the moon, shooting the breeze. So, Saturday, uh, Christmas in July, we'll be on the LDM radio station. Listen to us. Listen to the independent artists. Go to the LDMRadio.com and vote for some of these independent artists because they are doing a lot. They're giving so many uh, community events. They're doing the Christmas in July. I got the Nothing But Woman Power. So shout out to these women that are coming out. We have speakers coming out, uh, domestic violence speakers. We have... Uh, people with jewelry, people with businesses for females, that they're going to explain to you how you can get businesses. So there's going to be a lot out there for August 17th, Willis Community Garden. So check that out. We're also going to be doing Summer Bash. So we are collecting school supplies. So if you want to donate school supplies, hit the LDM network and find out how you can donate some school supplies because we are giving, trying to give out another hundred bags full of school supplies, book bags filled with school supplies. So it's going to be advanced food, everything else. But again, here comes the independent artist to perform for you guys for free. So give it up. All the access for your voting and everything else. So with that said, I guess I can finally try to take this commercial break. So we'll be back. And we're going to hit it off with an independent artist song. When we come back, we're going to come back with our guests. So again, an X for a reason, guys. We'll be right back. As mighty armies clash in a struggle for total domination, the scales can be tipped by one man who has the courage to confront his fate and make a choice that will decide the fate of the world. <coughs> Guys, put it on. 
lot of smoke here today. Wow. But anyway, were you expecting a real superhero? I don't think so. The real life superheroes are the ones that are helping out in their community today. And the LVM show will be there to bring you the events and stories to light. Do you know a real superhero? Let us know. But for now, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Also visit our websites for photos, videos, and updates. But until the meantime, hey, I gotta be out of here. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm Javier. And join us on El Latino Ruido every Wednesday at 6 p.m. on the LDM Network. Hello. Hello and welcome back to the LDM show. But again, uh, you guys will comment, comment in a few. We'll answer all those other questions. But we have our guest here today. Uh, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Hi. <laughs> I'm Shakima Marie. Where are you from? I'm from um, Instagram primarily, Bronx PR Hub. <laughs> she's, like, she's like from Instagram. I'm, you know, I'm right there. I live right in Instagram, you know. <laughs> Cut the corner on Facebook, <laughs> go straight towards Twitter, and you'll see me right there on Instagram. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Bronxite. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, see from the Bronx right there, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. But uh, we, bring her, we bring her in. Um, you deal a lot with the community, with the books and all yes. this other stuff. Tell me, before we get to anything, what made you start a company like that? Um, well, I'm a parent. <laughs> And so dealing with my children and the school system, um, just pouring into them. I'm an avid reader. I love reading, um, creating imagination. Uh, so I, I noticed that there was a need in our community for, you know, the, to bridge the literacy gap. And especially in my community, which is Fordham Heights. Oh, um, okay. The four train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many... Um, programs or after school programs or things to do within the community you know with the new technology age everyone wants to be on a tablet or phone or something even babies so um books is like my first love that, that is so true it's like uh we were speaking to one time we were to, uh, the last summer batch last year mm -hmm. and this kid had a uh, kendall mm -hmm. reading the book through right through there, not the yeah. actual paper mm -hmm. some people still like the feel of the paper you know I'm one. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I, you know, I used to love the smell of the libraries and stuff like that. Right. But then little by little, it even changed. the library had to catch up with times, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So there are some libraries that are renting uh, Kendall's and yeah. all that stuff. So yeah. I, I don't know. But um, besides technology taking over, what is uh, another reason why people are slowing down from reading uh, actual book? Quick access. They want things rapidly. They want to do things fast and quick. In my opinion, um, no one wants to take the time to just uh, have leisure time. You always have to be active and doing something and engaged in something, which is great. Um, but also, you need, I, I think that you need to sit and, and cultivate your own imagination um, for those writers out there. You need to find out who you are, what, what you know, genre you want to get into and stuff like that. Um, reading is important. It's for life directions, you know, yeah. papers, documents. <laughs> but uh, what, I, what I used to like is when I read, I used to imagine. Yes. Like it would, it would take me somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so that's why sometimes when they take a book and put it into a movie, I'd be like, that's not what the book exactly. is. Exactly. Because I already have my <laughs> own imagination, you know, like. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what is it that you do that can push uh, the kids to read more? What, what's the attraction? Um, Having them pick their own book instead of just saying, here, here, read this, read this. Um, you know, I've gotten donations or I've had my own home library. Um, that's another thing. Most communities or families in the communities don't have home libraries. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, basically we, well, the Bronx is predominantly, and I'm going to say this, Hispanic, and there's some, you know, families who don't have okay. Spanish books, who don't have, you know, they can't translate the language. Um, the children might. But the parents, you know, if they're, you know, older, so they don't, they can't, you know, help the children. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that I was speaking about. Like, I even tell my grandma, 
I'm like, uh, how long you been here? You don't know English? I don't need to learn English. I'm like, you just said English word. I damn it. You know, she gets mad and like, I'm like, okay, but she doesn't read English. And right. This, what is true? What you say is like, and then I. I'll see some of the kids speaking to their parents in English, and their parents are just looking at mm -hmm. them like, yeah. not knowing what's going on. Yeah. So they really can't help. It's not that they don't know it. They, you know, they're smart, but they right. just they can't help because they don't right. read English. I've, I've had some African parents come up to me because I used to work in my son's schools with the PTA, the SLT, very involved. Mm -hmm. And I've had some parents come up to me, African parents, saying, can you read this to me? And it was one of the flyers from the school, and she said, I don't know how to read. So that was that's is not only Hispanics is you know yeah, yeah, other yeah. cultures that's well, here. I think it's more of the uh, elder. Um, it is yeah that came here. Mm -hmm. Like they just don't want to adapt completely. Right. Or they're afraid to you mm -hmm. know to mm -hmm. adapt completely because right. they don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in cases like that? Meet them where they are. Um, try to outsource um, places that can help them. If you can go the extra mile, you know, translator, translators and things. Some, some of them are afraid to use, lose their culture. So they feel like if I do speak English or I adapt this certain type of way, then I'm not true to who I am, who my family is. Oh, um, I've had yeah. those conversations as well. Wow. And now, now you say you had a home library. It's like it's in a room where... My living room. <laughs> Just books wow. everywhere. So um, this past Saturday, I was handing out some books that was already in my home to the community with um, Longwood Village. They had a block party. Okay. And um, in conjunction with her, um, what is it, Learning to Read, Reading Together program, um, I was giving out older books for the older children. And because um, she primarily deals with, Francis primarily deals with zero to three-year-old. So it's early literacy, which and I'm, I do as well. It's like from zero to college. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lack of reading. I, I, got, I, I can honestly say I didn't read a book for at least two years. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it's because of the busyness and stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my wife reads to my son every night. We, like, we got a couple of books. We, we uh, got him a library card yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago. So even though we never went to the library yet, but <laughs> we got it. Just kids, just kids, you never know. <laughs> but the library also has a lot of programs nowadays. You, right. got, you can watch free movies, different resources, job fairs, workshops. Um, it, it's, it's more advanced now because of yeah, technology. Like I said, they had to catch up with time. <laughs> yes. like they didn't want to for a while. Right. And then as soon as they started losing the opportunity. Yeah, because they're closing the libraries. Ago, yeah, very so unfortunate. They started doing uh, much, much more. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, how how do you get your books? Um, well, some some <laughs> agencies, organizations that see me on Instagram and they see what I do, they ask if they can donate, and I will pick them up or they will drop them off, which is great. Um, I appreciate everyone I've come in contact with. Uh, the schools, when they're done throughout the year, they give out books, and I just go and collect them and I redistribute them back to the community, and that's that's how it goes. That, that's so cool because we have, so far, we've been uh, almost four or five years mm -hmm. constantly doing this show, and we met one person that does books in this area, and now mm -hmm. we know another person that does <laughs> books in the other area. So, yeah. guys, you can't say, oh, it's because we don't have, we have books. Right. You got, you got two companies that are doing um, giving out books, and yeah. they're in the middle of giving them access, oh, them yeah. access yeah. to books. So. Uh, and that's good because here in um, 149 and then Fordham Road, those are like the two main mm -hmm. areas that yeah. a lot of people, because those are the shopping areas. Right. For people that don't know, the tourists don't know those. <laughs> don't tell the tourists because then it's going to get even packed. <laughs> it's going to get even worse. Even though they're they spreading about 149, I've seen mm -hmm. a couple of, uh, you know, you don't belong here mm -hmm. like type of things. I was singing the Sesame yeah. Street song, one of these things doesn't belong here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've seen some white people shopping. I'm like... I'm like, wait, yeah. white people shopping at 149? Who told y'all mm -hmm. about this place? Right, <laughs> and, and they're going to revamp it again. They just was yeah. awarded $10 million, I think. Yeah, $10 million yeah. to uh, revamp everything that's in there. Starbucks is coming. That's it. We got a, a juicy uh, thing across the street, and now a Starbucks. That's it. You're done. Yeah. You're done. You know. Oh, oh, the cinnamon roll around the corner. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the, the expensive cinnamon roll. When you know that, you right. can go to the supermarket and get it for $1.49. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I'm from the Bronx. I know how to save money. I save money. You want it hot, throw it in the oven. You'll be all right. Right, right. 
<laughs> but uh, what was one of your favorite books when you were in, in school? Um, like your first book. Do you remember your first book that you ever read? The very... Wow, that's interesting. The very first book that comes to mind, um, I forget who wrote it, but it was called Baby Doll. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was this little girl on a pink cover of, um, I think, Golden Books, I think, with the gold seal on the side. It was a hardcover book. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she had a doll baby, and it was just talking about her baby doll. And, yeah, my mother used to always read to me, and I used to always want to be in adult conversation, so I would pick up on the words, read the dictionary, and then they said I was too smart. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, my mom, my mom always did that. Mom, what's this word mean? Here's the dictionary. Mm -hmm. And back in those days, we had the uh, excitement. Like too. Right, right. So it was like, what is it, A? Well, then get that <laughs> book that says A, and you tell me what it is. You go through, like, 50 pages. And I, I used to be like, Mom, do you really know what it is, or are you just trying to act? And you woman, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Grab the book. <laughs> but that's how I learned. Um, right. My first book that I always remember was the Red Balloon. Okay. Um, it was again the hardcover book that you had. You mm -hmm. said, but it was about a little boy who had a red balloon, mm -hmm. who let it go, and it went towards uh, the town. As he's running, trying to get the balloon, he starts noticing a lot of things of the town, okay. noticing stores and noticing people, um, mm -hmm. and then. He lost it, and then the red balloon, somehow, it's a book, came back to him. You know, it's not going to happen in real life. It's just a book. It came back to him, and he always thought, wow, the things that you've seen mm -hmm. out of this community. Yeah. So ever since I was young, I was like, I'm not going to stay in this one community because of that one book. Wow. Um, and that was, I was like in second, third grade, I, I remember. Mm -hmm. um, so books take you places. Yeah. It takes you, uh, and I, I'm a, more of a whodunit book person. Okay. Ooh. Love those who who I like books. I like mysteries, thrillers. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was a Goosebumps fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even even back <laughs> in the days, the Archie comics. Right. I still like I have that. a whole collection. Oh, someone no. someone I was coming from the library with my sons, and we was crossing the street, and my eye just looked over, and there was a whole collection in the garbage can, brand new books. Oh my! I said, God. um, I don't care who sees me going in this garbage, but I'm gonna take these home. And Those are classic yeah. the Archie books. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my, and they were like small. Some of them mm -hmm. were small. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, woo, those were back in the days with the bazookas. I, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm even throwing my age out there. <laughs> I'm always you know, throwing the age yes. out there. But no, those guns, the, 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 yeah, the, 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 the comics were like my like favorite. <laughs> but uh, we used to love, like me and my friends, like reading the uh, the books because of the stories. Right. And sometimes we'd be talking, and people were like, "Who was that? Who did that?" I'm like, "It was a book." Ah, y'all talking like it was real people. Like, yeah, but they were interested. They right, wanted to know. <laughs> right. And it's the Who Done It books for me. I don't, I don't know. I, those are the ones that I love. Like, I, I'm not really too into the love story mm -hmm, book and stuff mm -hmm. like that because it just takes me to a place where I love to be. I'm like, oh, my God, he's coming. Oh, right. my God. <laughs> Catch me talking to book. Run, run. <laughs> Staying up late at night with the flashlight. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Trouble. Yeah. <laughs> My mom used to get in trouble so much. Yeah. I seen the lights on, so you had to go under the cover with the yeah. flashlight. Yeah, and they children, still don't, you. children don't do that anymore. Well, I don't think. Well, they do it with the phones now. The, the but phone. they're texting. That's, they're not really reading. No. Yeah. But uh, reading a book, guys, uh, if you guys are uh, watching, um, even if you're watching pre recorded later, just comment below uh, what book do you remember and why. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, well, not the favorite book, but because uh, some people got a favorite book, but then they got a book that remind them of something that happened, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So just yeah. whatever book you love or whatever series you love of books, that's, a, that's another thing, yeah. you know, because there was like Archie and all of these other stuff. Oh, um, your, your life. Yeah. Your life. You know, the, like, um, there was, I don't know, it's interesting. No, no, no. Um, I actually saw the play before I read the book. Which one? Um, for Colored Girls Who Considered Suicide by, um, oh. yeah, that book and Alice Walker, you know, the stories, the women's stories. Right. That inspired me to take account the women in my family as well as myself and our experiences, and I started writing. So that, that's another, those are my sheroes, I would say. <laughs> or you know Lord. Books, <laughs> books really uh, yeah. do a difference. Mm -hmm. They really... Um, Continue, but if you guys are listening on the radio station as well, uh, comment on the uh, chat room, and then I'll check it up. What books you like? 
as well. So, because um, there's so, so many books that even now they're making these books into movies. Yeah. Because uh, I remember I used to cheat in high school. <laughs> mm -mm. You tell me to read a book, I used to try to run and see if they had a movie mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> but now all the details were in the movie. Yeah, that was I the got problem. caught one time. <laughs> My history teacher was like that. He was like, okay. Yeah. You want to try to grab me? You don't think I know? Because I did a, a yeah. book of Endless Love. Okay. And I watched the movie with Brooke <laughs> Shields. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, um, so what happened with uh, the guy? I was like, oh, they didn't like him no more, you know, because mm. of this and this. And he was like, oh, so he didn't try to kill the father? I was like, no, you crazy? That father? <laughs> he was like, yeah, he did. Read the book. So I'm like, I did. He said, no, read the book. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's true, because the books do say more details, I guess. Yeah. I don't know why they take them out in the movies. Maybe they think it was not too, too important, but mm -hmm. some cases they are. But again, uh, uh, if you guys want to donate some books, hit her, hit her up, donate uh, books. If you even want to get some books or to yes. learn where to get them, hit yeah. her up as well. So you can shop and for them <laughs> and get a free book or, or something. Come see me, get a free book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, uh, hey. You know, uh, the stores should start doing that. <laughs> Spend twenty dollars and get a free book. You know, <laughs> but because uh, books are, uh, who do you see more not reading um, too much books? <laughs> like an age bracket? Yeah. Um, I would oh, elementary students. Oh wow! Yeah. I thought they would be more into it. I they, thought she was going to say like junior high or, or maybe adults. Right? Elementary. Yeah. Wow. Well. Well, Same. elementary is uh, like 12, 11. It's like, yeah. it, it's spread across the board nowadays to me. Right. That's why I was like to put an age bracket on it. I'm not too sure. Yeah. I had one parent come last Saturday, and I had my books um, displayed. And one of her sons was there, and she said, oh, no, he doesn't like to read. And that was so disheartening. And oh, I said, he wow. could pick whatever, whatever genre he wants, comic so books, anything. That's what it is. But she picked books for the baby. And I was like, that's, that's great. Take one for him. I gave her two more. Take one for him, too. <laughs> but I hear you yeah. should you read this at night. Maybe you like this. Yeah, there's something that, that sparks your interest. Um, it's so important. The reading, learning, writing, speaking. Question then. If you have a son that's that age, how do you, how do you get them into reading? I'm sorry. We, we, we had a pause moment <laughs> because the engineer wanted to speak with no mic. She said... How do you, <laughs> we could be doing it for years, and I keep telling her, no one hears you. You're the person behind the, 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 the whole uh, carpet or, or curtain, you know, you don't listen to the lady behind the curtain. But um, how, how, what was the question again? See, I just, like, forgot about the question. How do you You want to turn that off? I did. Oh, okay. So how do you spark the interest of like 11 year old, 12 year old teenagers that doesn't like to read? Ooh, that's a hard one. That's um, interesting. How you do that? um, I did battle that with my younger son. Mm. And I took account what he loved. He loved basketball. So the, the scholastic fairs he went to, I showed him the autobiographies, I showed him different things with the basketball players. Um, wrestling was another big favorite of his, so he started to get all books about wrestling. Every time he went to the library, he got wrestling, and then he started repeating the facts back to me. Um, you know, I still can't get him to write, so no essays yet, but he had picked up reading. My oldest one was the same way. In third grade, he hated to read. Hated, hated, hated. But he loved oh. anime, um, Japanese cartoons, oh, yep. and stuff like that. So when he became a teenager, of course, he picked up reading as he got older. When he became a teenager, he started writing. And when he showed me his first chapter, I cried. <laughs> like, oh, my God, you didn't want to read, and now you're writing. Like, this is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so just show them um, what they're interested in. Find out what they're interested in. And I know some parents, it's hard to buy books um, or either to get to places. Some families don't even have the library card for different reasons, you know, maybe it's ID or something like right, that. Right. Um, so just giving the community the resources that's available to them that they can, you know, get involved with the reading. Yeah, you, you know, if, like we said, we got a uh, library card, we didn't use it. 
I didn't get one because if they punch in my name, they're going to see that I still got that junior high school book. <laughs> I still got that junior high school book. I don't know where it's at. Yeah. So I owe them about one million <laughs> by now, by late fee. <laughs> That's true. They'll be. It's still yeah, there. Because all of us in the 80s and 90s, we got at least one book yeah. that we didn't take back. <laughs> That's true. You know what I'm saying? But uh, when, I, when I was in PA, I, I used to go to the library every uh, Saturday because they used to rent movies as well. So mm -hmm. I used to go and uh, rent a movie and then sit there, drink um, some juices. They had coffee for the members. Okay. So stuff like that, I haven't really seen here in New York. So maybe if they do that, people will come in and like Barnes yeah. & Nobles was doing. You know? Yeah, that was, that was lovely. Yeah, but Barnes & Nobles lost money because people were taking advantage, <laughs> talking about, oh, I can get free coffee. I'm just, <laughs> just, just there. The book. I ain't buying nothing. Freak that. You should have done a policy that you have to buy to before you sit. Mm -hmm. Maybe you would have still been in business, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was a good place to do. But the libraries, uh, now they're doing reading with the kids and stuff like that. I've seen some libraries yes. doing that. They do have readings. Um, I think an event just passed with uh, Literacy Inc., which I'm also a part of. I'm a VIP mm. parent, a very important parent. I took the training, got the certificate. I can go to any park and hold my own reading sessions. Wow. Um, and they also give me free books to give to the community. So that's another organization. Um, mm. The Bronx Library on Fordham Road is open till 9 o'clock. A couple of days out of the week, that's the latest, I think, in New York. That's the only library that's open till late. Wow. Um, and they have plays. I've seen different plays there. There's workshops. There's resources. The Job Center. There's so many different um, resources okay. that they have. Fordham? Fordham. For yeah, Fordham mm -hmm. has a... A library going towards Kingsbridge. Mm -hmm. If it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I remember, because uh, I used to go to Walton and then go to the uh, library. Mm -hmm. So they got a couple of good libraries around there. We have two over this direction. So there's libraries out there, so check them and out. Some libraries are better than the other. Yeah, yeah. just some libraries are more uh, kid, and then some of them are more adult. So mm -hmm. you just got to... You know, some of them are more the nerds, you know. Yeah. So, some just want to hang out, you know. So you, you just got to find the one that is for you, you know, mm -hmm. or, or the section of the, the library that's for you. You, you know, you got the ham and egg sections here. Mm -hmm. You got the, uh, the Harry Potter <laughs> section. <laughs> so, yeah. but it's, it's, you know, it's a good thing that you've um, been doing. So, uh, and plus, how long have you been doing it? I would say 17 years, because that's the age of my oldest child. <laughs> hey. But Bronx PR Hub, I officially started on Instagram because a lot of parents are reaching out to me, um, just wanting to connect. And I think I've been on Instagram maybe a year or two. Um, and when I network, go to different events, um, just give them a business card, and they'll either tell me to come to their next events, or, you know, can you post this for me, and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Do they have, uh, uh, what's that called, um, when all the people get together that they read the same book? Or how they call book that? clubs? Book club. I'm a part of a book club as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we used to be like, that's a white thing. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, a, that's a suburb type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think it was uh, a way to get people to be together, mm -hmm. network, and mm -hmm. be friends. Community. Have that common, yeah. common thing. So yeah. Maybe they should do that for the kids. Yeah. You know? I think... Um, they do it? No, no, but like a book club, yeah. like like five or seven kids are reading the same book, and then they get together and comment about it. I'm, Maybe I'm, I'm trying to remember her name. Oh, they have that? They have a teen one. Mm, I'm okay. not too sure about a younger generation one, but there definitely is a teen book club, and it's hosted in the Andrew Friedman home. Um, oh. um, the Bronx is reading. I think she does. She, uh, Fennel, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, don't kill me, please. <laughs> <laughs> but the Bronx is reading. She hosts a teen book club. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's nice. Like, you know, the teens will get together. Because mm -hmm. now it gives them something to right. talk about when they... Yeah. Which one? The Bronx is reading. We invited her? Oh, the Bronx is reading. So now if you're listening to us, you know, <laughs> come over. Seamless plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, because we, uh, we like to bring the community mm -hmm. here, this is the reason why um, we, you know, I'm not afraid to say it, but we won so many awards while helping the community out. 
uh, in that case, and boosting people up. Even right. with our radio station, boosted so many people up, like they so happy. I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just because I lived in the Bronx pretty much all my life mm -hmm. until I went to college and then came back. But when I came back, I'm like, hey, what happened to the uh, truck that changed. used to come and give us free lunch? Right. What happened to the uh, uh, school lunches? What happened to this? Everybody was like, Charles, you've been gone too long. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. And then I see an event going on, and I'm like, yo, why y'all didn't tell me this event was oh, I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. So that's when mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, there's things that are going on in the Bronx, but people right. are, are not noticing. So I said, you right. know what, i got to do something to bring everyone back yeah. and say, this is what's going on in the yeah. Bronx because we're not dying. The Bronx is still here, right. and we're, we want to boost up even more. Right. So That's, that's something similar to um, why I had created the, under that title of Bronx Parents Resources Hub. Mm. Um, initially, it was for parents because that's just the community that I was right, in, right. Um, but it's for anyone, adults, teens, children. I post all kind of links and resources. I was tired of going to Brooklyn and Manhattan, I didn't frequent Queens as much, but just to go to the events and the time commute was just too much. And I was like, hey, there's a lot of things in the Bronx, some things I didn't know myself. Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah, let me get this out to other people because this is pretty dope, you know? Yeah, it, it's, it's incredible, guys. I'm telling you, yes, thank you, thank you, because it is so much things that are going on in the Bronx. The history, uh, I'm, I'm even trying to get one of these guys that made a book with all the pictures of the history of the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know that the person that made um, Batman lived on Grand Concourse on 170. Okay. So there are things in that book that I'm like, wow. Yeah. So much history that went into the Bronx, um, you know, down even the mafia people. Some of the mm -hmm. mafia, big mafias hanged out mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Some of the big singers, like things that you didn't know right. of the Bronx. Yeah. And, you know, the birth of hip-hop, no matter the argument yep. between Brooklyn and, and Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's also right. the birth of freestyle music, which helped um, R&B and helped right. all these other ones. So the Bronx is there, and it's still here. So, guys, research. Research, yeah. um, especially her, I've just been noticing, like, uh, I've been on Instagram for, like, two days straight. Noticing, and then I see you I'm always stuff posting, up, always posting, posting stuff up. Three o'clock, like, one o'clock, anytime. Yeah, I'm like, is that her event? <laughs> and I notice, I'm like, that's not her event. But she's one of those that want people to know what's mm -hmm. going on in the Bronx. So, you yeah. know, for that, I applaud you and, and you. keep Thank that you. up. Um, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're just going to have a little big conversation for the last five, ten minutes of the show. Um, I will go quick, uh, you know. Oh, it's been an hour already? Yeah, it goes wow. kind of fast. I just look down and I'm like, oh, wow, it's commercial break time. <laughs> Um, we, if you notice, guys, we didn't take the first commercial, um, the second commercial, I mean, mm -hmm. because we got into a good conversation about books. So, uh, and still, comment below. Let us know uh, what kind of books do you guys have read. Um, of course, if you're watching us on BronxNet, you won't be able to do it, but um, <laughs> you can go on the page and just comment. Hashtag uh, books for Bronx or something. Let's, let's make a new hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Bronx books. <laughs> so, and that way I can find it and see which ones you good. And any horror people out there? You know, I love the Who Done It. Not the horror books. I don't like the horror books. I like the Who Done It. <laughs> you know, the the Holmes. The uh, uh, who is who's that? Who's those two guys? I don't know if you remember. They they uh, before we go to commercial break, they made a, a show of it. But it used to be a book. The brothers that they they were Who Done It brothers. Um, Oh, it was a mystery? Yeah, it was a mystery, two and then they brothers, came out into brothers. a show oh with, with Beretta and all of them. Oh I'm going to try to find, though, the, not the Hardy it's Boys. Stuck in my head. Not the Hardy Boys. That's what, oh, that's, that's, the word. Yeah. that's what I had in my head. No, not the, the Hardy Boys. Was it the Hardy Boys? No, is that wrestling? Hardy Boys. No, Hardy Boys is wrestling but, as well. <laughs> right, right, but I think it was the, um, the, the book. Anyway, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to Google <laughs> while, while we go on break. When we come back, I'm going to find it. Because it just, for some reason, I can see them with the little bob. Uh -huh. <laughs> on the cover, so I can I know who they are. I just forgot the name, but uh, we'll be right back.
God, who's that girl? Where? Hello, right there. Oh, that's inside. Oh, that girl. She thinks he's all that. I first just stopped all around. I mean, just look at her. Drown your face in the grass. Don't you know nobody wants her here? And her own mother wants her. She should just stay home with Dyla. Even her boyfriend has to go the other one. I would too. Hashtag loser. <laughs> The suicide of a teenage girl in British Columbia is drawing attention tonight to the issue of bullying. Before she died, she chronicled online what she'd endured. Now, as Duncan McHugh reports, much of the response is also appearing online. Bullying and suicide has been a great issue on today's world. But what would happen if we were to stop what's happening and became friends with the person being bullied? Maybe the results would have been different. Let's watch this video again, but this time, let's stop this and see what happens. Oh, that girl, she thinks he's all that. I first just stopped all around. I mean, just look at her. Doesn't she know nobody wants her here? Her own mother wants her. She should just stay home with daughters. Even her boyfriend has to go the other one. I would too. Hashtag loser. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I guess so. Don't worry about them, they're nobody's anyway. Yeah, girl, they only seem to be good because they have nothing better else to do with them. Yes, girl, that is true. Yeah, I know, I just hate it when they say stuff like that, especially when it's not true. So what, they're only good? Well, it's just that. That. Never mind. You guys will never understand. It's okay, we're friends now, so let's get out of here and talk about it. I don't know. Come on, it'll be okay. We can go and talk about it. Yes, girl, remember you are not alone. Well, I don't know. Oh, I don't see how it works, but I'll go. Second scene, bully, take one, and action. Doesn't she know nobody wants her here? Not even her own mother wants her. She should just stay home or die or something. Even her boyfriend left her. <laughs> all right, welcome to the LDM show. I got to wait for all cameras to turn on <laughs> before we even um, speak. But uh, like I said, one day the budget allows us, we're going to have extra cameras where we can see us, how we conversate when we're in commercial, because we'd be sometimes getting deeper than we do on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, oh, yeah, it was the question. It was the Hardy Boys. It was the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew mystery. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that was a good book to read where it was more of a mystery. Mm -hmm. So those were good books. But she had a good question as well. Um, she was asking about what gets you excited, excited when you yeah. read a book uh, besides us. Because like, we were speaking about books and we were like getting all excited. <laughs> Archie and all this other stuff. We were like remembering our childhood or something. Yeah. But uh, like to me, 
the books that get me excited is, like I said always, is the mystery, mm -hmm. but it's because I use my imagination. Right, right. And I put pictures and faces, I, mm -hmm. like I put them in different rooms already. <laughs> and, like, and then I, I speak to them, to my friends about the book, and it's like a movie to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're like, wow, you, you got into details. I'm like, well, you didn't say all that in the book. I'm right. just, you know, ad-libbing a little. <laughs> You're expressing yourself. Yeah. yeah, so it's good. But again, guys, Bronx PR Hub, check her out on Instagram. If you got books that you want to donate that you read already or just collecting dust, <laughs> you know, clean it out first. You know, get the little yeah. dust mat, clean it out, bring it over. Yeah, the Swiffer, you know. You got a little thing, the edge ones or whatever you want to use, the airbrush, you know, the clean it out. Just clean it out first. Uh, but some of them are probably getting yellow pages already, like on the side. That's how old they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Um, but and who got who got um the cyclopedia? I wanna know. Somebody still got a cyclopedia out there? Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Someone, someone donated a, um, a section, not the whole collection. Oh, okay. And when I opened the box, I was like, whoa, <laughs> like it was a relic. <laughs> See, now you got to get the complete stuff. Like, we had the complete stuff, and then every house was always missing a couple of letters. Mm -hmm. So you got to be like, which one you missing, D? <laughs> All right, yeah, Pito got the D upstairs. We borrowed a D, give him the F, because he don't have the F. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, that's how we, yeah. because we couldn't afford the whole A to Z, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, they used to knock on the door. So my, my mom used to be like, oh, we'll give you one free. And then, you you know, if you like it, you can get the rest. Okay, thank you. And close the door. She'll take that one free. So that's how she got, like, at least seven letters. <laughs> but, but those were the, the good old days. But uh, who else I want to know who will still have a complete set would be cool. Complete You know, of the encyclopedia. Because I remember when computers started coming out, I had, had the psych um, A to G or something like that on one disc and then they gave me the other disc oh, wow. so you know that's how i did it with the cds but i guess that's mm. when the book started dying when mm. the computer started really yeah. coming out but again bronx <laughs> hub is in the house check her out so um real quick we got a couple minutes yeah oh we got like three minutes but we were talking about exes and all that stuff in the beginning of the show uh babying and then warning and then don't get it how do you, how you feel about stuff like that I would not baby a grown man. No. I am not your mother. Not hold them. I will. I will. <laughs> I will hold you. I will embrace you, but I'm not gonna rock you like you're a, a, a baby. Mm. No, what I'm your I, partner. <laughs> what, what, how long would it take before you'd be like, no, that's enough. You got to go. Like, um, when he starts demanding and whining like a real child. Like that's just too much. Oh, I do that when I'm sick. <laughs> when I'm sick, though. Uh, when you're sick. When you're extremely sick. No, he just got a little slow. Uh, no, suck it up. <laughs> well, us men, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't really take sickness. Let's say it true. We don't really That's take true. sickness that well. That's true. Yeah. That's I, I true. seen a video where uh, they were saying uh, a woman versus a man, uh -huh. and the uh, the woman hit a toe on the uh, couch, on the mm -hmm. edge of the couch, and she was like, ow, ow, and then just put her high heels and left. The guy hit the toe, it was exaggeration mode. He jumped, he fell out of the floor. He died. He, jumped, he was rolling, <laughs> running around, ah, screaming. Oh my God. We, we, yeah. don't, we don't take it so lightly. But, because uh, yeah. like I said, the, the poster said her ex got shot and she babied him and got him back to walking and then mm -hmm. he went with another person. Um, how do you feel about oh, wow. that? Um, that's very unfortunate. Um, to deal with someone and help, not deal with someone, but to help someone back to health, so to speak. And it's like a slap in the face. Like, oh, thank you, bye. Right. You know, that's but, gotta but, hurt. And, and I, I gotta stick up for the man at this point. Maybe he didn't ask for her help. He, but he didn't stop her. Hey. We don't know, I don't know Listen, them. I don't when know I'm walking the street, I don't ask the, the car to stop and let me cross, but if he stop and let me cross, I'm gonna do it. That's you know true. what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, it, uh, to the woman, I hope she doesn't dwell on it. Just continue right. moving on and just, you know, watch who you give your all to. If they're not reciprocating that. Yeah, but not only that, it's, it's called the ex. She was a, he was an ex. Right? Now, that's the question I had. When it began, you said the ex. Now, right. he is the ex in present moment. But my question is, was he the ex when she did this for him? That's the... Well, she the said, my ex got shot and I went to the hospital. So that yeah. means he was an ex. 
So you mm -hmm. baby him and got him to walk and all this, thinking you were gonna be mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And he I mean, went so with many, else. so many factors can play into yeah, that. Because if he didn't have a woman at the time and they were good friends, and as a friend, you know, you may help him. Yeah, but I guess but, the feeling yeah. was getting if yeah that that that, that oh what it would have been. Yeah. If I was with you, you probably would have never got shot or oh, something, you know what I'm saying? Like the I, guilt, I see, I see. The guilt probably kicked in, and maybe yeah. that's why. But my, my thing is, uh, my mom always told me, never love to get love in return. Mm, you so, do it out of free will. Mm -hmm. Right, you just mm -hmm. do it because you wanted to do it. Right. So that's true. By you um, giving him love and thinking you were going to get it and don't, mm -hmm. that's going to... Yeah, that's why I say you. I hope she moved on, you know, and continued to be happy in life. That's true. Well... This is the LVM show, and that's all we have for today. <laughs> but again, Bronx, P uh, PR, I was going to say. I have, why I don't Not DR, PR. Yeah. <laughs> um, is in the house. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking PR, you know, Puerto Rico and stuff like that, mm -hmm. what's going on. But Bronx, uh, hub, thank you. Get books, please. Um, at least try to read. Even if you're not reading to yourself, read to your kids, yeah. um, to your child. That imagination goes a long, yes. long yes. way. They could be the next screenwriter. Yeah. You never know. So all the good <laughs> writers have well good imaginations. Yes. Look at look at uh, uh, Harry, who is um, uh, Richie from the Happy Days. Okay, yeah. He did a lot of uh, good um, movies. Mm -hmm. Jaws. Like these people had some imaginations yeah. to do these things. So even Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Oh my <laughs> God! You know, come on. Yeah. Stan Lee and all of them uh, had imagination as they a uh, child. Mm -hmm. But some of these movies, I'd be like, mm, you didn't have no friend, you didn't have no imagination, because <laughs> your movie sucked. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's so, true. Come on, let's give these kids some imagination. Don't give them all toys. Let them play with the little cars yeah. and stuff like and that. And start communicating with each other again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. So we'll see you next week. Uh, remember, catch me on Saturday on the radio. Uh, if not... Just catch me next Thursday right here on the LDM Network. So, you got me. Hey,